So let's say we were given this matrix. We were told it was a rotation matrix. Okay, It is of this form. Now, let's say we just needed to work out what the angle theta was. Okay, So, what we would need to do is, I, I mean, I would probably bring that half in. It's just a scalar multiplier at the moment. So I would bring it in and write that as root 3 over 2, negative 1 over 2, 1 over 2, and root 3 over 2. Now, each of these elements must correspond with one of those. So we're being told that cosine of the angle is root 3 over 2, and sine of the angle is equal to one half. Okay? Now, we do have to be a little bit careful here because um, the solutions here must be precisely the same as the solutions here. Okay? Now, if we were to solve cosine theta equals root 3 over 2, okay, then for root 3 over 2, we're getting potentially two different solutions. So inverse cosine of uh, root 3 over 2, I'm in degrees, uh, you get 30 degrees. Okay, and I'm just looking at between th uh, 0 and 360 here. So that's the 30. And the second solution is 30 degrees down from the 360, so 330. Okay, so the question is going to be, Am I getting 30 or am I getting 330 here? Okay. So when I do inverse uh, sine of a half, I get the 30 degrees. So there's the half, there's the 30, and that's 180, so this would have to be 150, 30 degrees down. So we've got 30 and 150. So clearly, the 30 degrees is the same in both. And so this must be a rotation uh, by 30 degrees anti-clockwise about the origin. So the lesson to learn here is that when doing this, you must have that consistency in the solution. Okay, if 30 degrees was only a solution of one of them, so for example, I know it's not um, a rotation by 330 degrees uh, anti clockwise about the origin because 330 degrees is not a solution of sine theta equals a half. Okay, so if I type in sine of 330 degrees, I get negative a half. So it would be a different matrix if it was a rotation through by that angle rather than the 30 degrees.